Town Road in the newer, larger showroom right down from First Baptist on Stewart Road. And guess what, folks? Their Black Friday sale is already in progress. Go by and check it out at your local Mermaid Mattress. Mermaid Mattress is looking for full and part-time delivery drivers for in-home delivery and setup. F endorsement, clean driving record, and background check are required. Good pay, great benefits, and flexible schedules are available by coming by a Mermaid Mattress Factory on Georgetown Road to apply and interview. An afternoon highs today ranging from 63 to 68 degrees, so it will be a mild day ahead. Overnight tonight, clouds will be clearing up starting in the evening time hours, becoming mostly clear overnight with lows from 45 to 50. Be sure to download our weather app. It's free for iPhone and Android. I'm meteorologist Allison Pryor for the Channel 3 Storm Alert Team. This weather forecast is brought to you by Hawassi Chase Air Systems, offering 24-hour service with 100% satisfaction guarantee, doing things the right way for over 60 years. Call them at 423-472. 24569 or visit hawassichaseairsystems.com. Right now, your current vascular institute temperature 68 degrees, a very nice afternoon out there for mid November, that is for sure. A time for another interview there. We got in our studio right now, time to talk about packing shoe boxes. And I don't know anybody any better to talk about that than Christy Williams uh, that's here with us with Operation Christmas Child. And she's brought along a friend today. And then we found out that they were school friends. Yes. back in the day and uh, so uh, if you're watching on mix tv this afternoon you see christy williams here then you see eric gardner here from volunteer ridipest so good afternoon to both of you guys good afternoon yeah, good afternoon so so glad to have you guys in here and uh, what we're going to say what one thing doesn't look like the other we're going to go into all of this in just a second you're like operation christmas child volunteer ridipest but there is a connection we're going to put it all together in just a second. Uh, first of all, Christy, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on. What's the latest with Operation Christmas Child? Well, this is collection week. It started yesterday. So with 15th through the 22nd, we're collecting shoe boxes at First Baptist Church right here in Cleveland. So if your business, church group, or community group's been packing shoe boxes or had a project going on, now is the time to get them to us. You have till 6 o'clock on the 22nd, 6 p.m., to get those boxes to us. Yesterday, for the first time ever, we filled up a trailer on the first day. Wow. 350 cases inside one trailer full yesterday when we first started. Within like three hours, we had that trailer full. So it's going great this year. It's just like everybody has picked up from where we left off in 2019. Right. And it's really awesome. We're so excited to see the results of what's going to come in uh, with our shoe boxes for the year. Now, you know, when you drive by First Baptist, you kind of see it on the sign there, Operation Christmas Child, Samaritan's Purse, kind of see that. But for people that may have heard about it but don't really understand it, kind of walk us through what that is. It's a missions project of Samaritan's Purse to show God's love in a tangible way to children in need all over the world. So we do that by packing a shoebox with basically three items, or three categories, excuse me, school supplies, hygiene items, and what we call a wow, or toys, a yo-yo, a stuffed animal, a deflated soccer ball with a pump, um, fun things like sunglasses or uh, little other little small toys, cups, drinking cups, utensils, uh, eating utensils, stainless steel, even, like I said, gallon size, empty gallon size Ziploc bags because they could store food or carry water in them. I saw um, a post on Facebook just recently of saying how important uh, food items or not eating items but you know accessories, utensils, plates, cups are important to these children because they have nothing. Wow. And of course, you've heard me share the stories of how, for some children, their favorite item was a toothbrush, or other children, it was a bar of soap. So just some basic hygiene items, and, and then the school supplies are so important because many children can't go to school unless they have their own school supplies. So when the child receives a shoebox, they hear about God's love and his son, Jesus, that he sent. And they say, because of God's gift to you, Jesus Christ, we have a gift for you. So it's a tangible way to show God's love to these children. You know, and when we talk about these boxes, these, these shoe boxes that are packed, uh, whether it's an in individual churches, businesses, and different things like that, I guess you would say roughly $20, $25 tops uh, to, to get a shoe box packed? Yes. In fact, and if you want to pack one online, that's what it costs, $25 if you want to go online and do one virtually. 
and that includes the shipping donation. Um, we have gotten our cost. I'm, I'm being braggadocious, but at First Baptist, <laughs> we got ours down to like eight dollars and change. My by, goodness! By buying in bulk, shopping all year round, hitting the clearance sales, so you could really do it a lot cheaper. If you just kind of think about, it, just keep in the back of your mind throughout the year, if it's something that you like to do, and you're in a retail store and check the clearance racks, get the after Christmas, after Easter sales, and, and just just kind of squirreled away till it comes around November. And again, buy your school supplies when they're on sale in July and August. That's true. And so then when November rolls around, all you got to do is put it all together. That's good stuff. Again, we're going to talk more about this as we go along. But now it's time to welcome in our other guest. Eric Gardner is here with Volunteer Ritapest. Eric, kind of tell me the tie-in with Operation Christmas Child and what you guys want to do there. Not only you, your family, because I know it's a family-owned and run business, but also Volunteer Ritapest. Well, my wife Beth and I have been looking for several years to find some kind of calls that we can get behind, get our employees involved in. We've now got 28 employees, and so we were trying to find the right fit. And so Christy came along with Operation Christmas Child. We thought, well, we'd like to be a collection site. Well, not a collection site, but we want to collect items, and we want to pack boxes as a company. So we're asking our customers, if you have some items you'd like to donate, bring them by our office, drop them off. We have a collection bin in the lobby. Um, if, you're, if, our guys are, if you're a customer and our guys are gonna be at your house, you know, give them a few things. They'll bring it back to the office. If you if you can't get out and you have some things you'd like to donate, let us know. We'll come by your home. We'll pick them up and bring them wow. to our office because we're going to be packing boxes next week, and we still need some more items. Yeah, you're looking for those hygiene items, those wow items, everything that Christy mentioned a while yeah. ago. You just need those individual items so you can kind of put some boxes together of your own. That's right. That's right. We have on our website, volpest.com, we have a list of all, it's Christy's list, everything that we need for the boxes. So you go by, pick out one item, five items, whatever you want to do, pick it out, and you can drop it off by our office or give us a call at 472-7736, and one of our guys will come pick it up. Now, we talk about dropping it off at the office. Uh, Eric, of course, we know where you're at because we're almost neighbors <laughs> right around the corner there. But for people listening in, give us that location. It's at 633 Mimosa Drive right across from Duracell. And you can't miss it. it usually there's a big volunteer rid pest truck right out front there as, as they're checking in and out of the office. Uh, so we hope that you will consider doing that. If you're someone in the community, maybe you're a part of the Volunteer Rita Pest family. We know that tons of people out there in our community are. Uh, we know that they're the best, right? I mean, heck, come on. They, they serve us here. They serve us every place that I know of. Uh, if you are a part of that Volunteer Rita Pest family, just go by and make that donation. And if you're not real familiar with Mimosa Drive, really, if you're on Mouse Creek Road and you're maybe right here in front of our station on the front side of Duracell, it's that connection road that goes around to the back side of it. There's a row of different businesses that is there, uh, very easy to spot. And I'll tell you what, folks, if, if you are serious about wanting to help and you like, you know what, can I just drop it off at the radio station? I will walk it over there to you, Eric. If somebody wants to drop something off here because they think they know where this is at a little easier. Yeah. So the challenge is to you listeners and people that are customers of Volunteer Ritapest, if you just want to drop it off there or here, we'll make sure, because we are really neighbors. I can I can throw a rock and, and hit and hit the Volunteer Ritapest building from here. Uh, so just make sure you do that. But uh, we, we are calling on the community, right, Eric? That's right. We're just saying, if you'd like to help in any way, just whatever you can do, we'd be glad to have it. Just drop it by our office, drop it by here at the radio station. And I'll even come up and get it. You there just you give go. me a call. And or like I said, our guys are out all over the county. So one of our guys is probably going to be in your neighborhood. Yeah. So if you got something you'd like to donate, give us a call. Yeah. 472-7736. Christy, we're going to come back over to you. People doesn't realize the impact that this one little shoe box, and I, I decided to put a price on it a while ago because you really can't put a price on salvation, first of all. Uh, and that's what happens with this shoe box because you get that message and you give hope to not only that person that receives it, but everybody else as that person takes that home to a family and shares the love of Christ with a group of people at that point. So you, you kind of multiplied what you've done. Yes, Samaritan's Purse motto for this project is evangelism, discipleship, and multiplication. And the uh, the average impact for a shoebox is seven to ten people that are impacted. Incredible. But basically, I think I've told you the story of the the girl, the little girl in the um, Middle East at a refugee camp who received a shoebox, and that one child ended up leading fifty two 
others to the Lord, one child who receives salvation. And through the extended discipleship program that they're offered to attend after they receive the shoebox, the impact of the discipleship program alone, three children a minute come to know the Lord somewhere in the world. So that's 180 children an hour. It's the easiest and it's the most fun missions project you could ever be a part of. And it's so simple and anyone can participate, your little tiny grandchildren to the elder we had. In fact, um, the uh, Garden Plaza residents collected items for us and they delivered those over to us at First Baptist Church. Wow. Just so any yeah. age, anybody could participate. Yeah, everybody has that little tug on their heart when you hear stories like this. You're, you, when people don't have utensils to eat with, don't have a plate to put anything on, they don't have the opportunity to go to school unless they have paper and pencils and those type of things. And you, you've mentioned to me before how people will get paper and then they will get erasers and they'll use it and then they'll erase it back off and reuse the same piece of paper again. Or they'll take a pencil and break it in half, sharpen both ends so two kids can have a pencil to use in school. I mean, we, we would, ne I guess in our society, wouldn't even think about that. We wouldn't think about erasing a piece of paper to reuse it or breaking a pencil in half so somebody else could have the other half. We're just not that type of society. We, we kind of get away from those things. Yeah, I heard read one story one time about a little boy who was so excited because he got two pencils in his shoebox. He was jumping up and down. I have two pencils. I have two pencils. I had none. Now I have two. And to us, two pencils is nothing. That's right. not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. But when you have none, two pencils can make the difference. Not only maybe for that child, but maybe for a sibling. Right, absolutely, because it is what... Uh, goes home with that child with that box that 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 just kind of spreads the gospel and uh, you just never know the impact that's going to have. Yeah, and Christy told me a story about entire families using one toothbrush. Yes. Now I, I love my family, too. but yeah. I don't want to share my toothbrush. <laughs> Not yeah. only that, but orphanages, entire orphanage. One girl told us it was like two to three hundred of them in the orphanage. They had to share one toothbrush, and Isn't ten of amazing? them at a time in the bathtub, using the same washcloth and the same bar of soap. So for her to get that bar of soap and her own washcloth was priceless. Yeah. It was her very own. So mm -hmm. we can't even fathom that. You know, the thing about it, too, is that uh, the, the, the wow items are something that we, we call them wow because these kids, if you put a soccer ball with a little pump in the needle so they can pump that up once it arrives, man, that is something that a whole community can play with. Mm -hmm. When you think about a soccer ball kicking it around and, and a luxury for that. And you've also talked about in the past with me, Christy, so many stories about uh, dolls and different things that people received and, and, and how that's just really been something they would have eight or nine years later. That was kind of a security blanket or something to get them through uh, some rough spots in their life. Yes, I have heard several um, what we call shoebox, shoebox recipients. As adults, they're now adults, but they received yeah. a shoebox as a child. And it's one box, one lifetime for one child. So they don't get boxes year after year. And how many of them have hung on to maybe one or two items that they just cherish so much that they were able to keep and guard and protect up into adulthood. I heard one girl, from, she was from um, one of the Asian countries, and she still, she says, this is the stuffed puppy that I received as a child. I mean, she still has that item. That's how important it is and priceless. And she would tell us that she had to share her toys with some cousins that lived a couple hours away. So whenever they would visit one family or other, their parents may have said, now let your cousins have the toys and then they, that they got in the shoebox. Right. So they would, they would share the, these items among two families and she had gotten an etch-a-sketch in her box and they didn't even know what it was they just had it up on a shelf and it wasn't until her sister accidentally bumped it one day dusting and it moved the knob moved and then they realized it was a toy so <laughs> they just don't know but it was yeah. it was such a, a, a um, treasure that for just the one family to get these toys but then they shared it with their cousins that lived in a distant village Good stuff. Again, we're talking about Operation Christmas Child. Time to pack shoe boxes as that got underway yesterday, uh, getting started with, with packing week. Uh, Eric Gardner is also here from Volunteer Ridapest saying that he wants to be a part of this. He wants to be a, a drop-off supply locate. Is that really the best way to say it, guys? Uh, you just want those individual items. items. Yeah, you don't bring your boxes. Yeah, don't bring your they boxes to, to Eric. He, he <laughs> don't need your boxes. He's just wanting to get items to put in boxes that you guys are going to pack That's right. at gonna, the end of your week. We're going to pack them and deliver them over to Christy. So we're pr planning to do that next Tuesday. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Eric, walk us through what you want the, the community to know and do again, please. 
uh, just drop off anything you would like to donate for this cause. You can go to their website, fallpest.com, and just click on Operation Christmas Child, and it'll take you to the list. And you can print off the list or write down the things you want to donate. Uh, you can pick different age groups, boy or girl, whatever you want to donate. And then just bring it by our office, 633 Mimosa Drive. You can drop it by the radio station, as you generously offer. Absolutely. Or call our office, say, hey, I've got some things for you. You know, here's where I live. Can you pick it up? And we'll say, yeah, hang it on your doorknob, and we'll be by today. Oh, good, good stuff. You hang it on your doorknob, be no problem at all. Won't even have to bother the people or yeah, any, yeah. don't worry about being at home or anything like that. So volunteer Red Pest, just another way they're a part of this community. And, uh, Eric, just uh, briefly, uh, you didn't come here at all to talk about vol Volunteer Redipest as a company uh, besides what you're doing. But just kind of tell us about your services just quickly here. Well, we are a full-service termite pest control business. We've branched out into moisture control. We do crawl space encapsulations. We do handyman repairs. If you've got a termite damaged floor or it's damaged by wood decay fungus, we can replace the floor joists. We can install jacks, all kinds of things to protect and you know, make your home more valuable. And it's one of those things too, if you're used to letting someone like your company come into your home already, if they're already handling your pest control, then you feel comfortable letting them back in your home to do some of these other things. You've already got a relationship. That, that's that. the hope that they trust us to do one thing and yeah. they know we're going to carry through with the same uh, type of work, anything we do. And I make sure that it, that does happen. Well, I know you do. You, you stay on top of those guys. <laughs> matter, matter of fact, you usually call over here if they've been here today. They get everything taken care of and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, Eric does stay on top of everything there with Volunteer Ritapest whether it's the pest control or the other things that he mentioned. All right, as we close here well, with this interview, Christy, you get the final word. Tell us what you want us to know about Operation Christmas Child and what we need to do the rest of this week. I just want to reiterate the uh, item drive that Eric's doing. Please, we want new and unused items. We don't want your dirty toys that your kids had since they were three. Right. These children, these items are going to represent Jesus Christ, God's love, so we, don't, we want to give them something new. So I just Good want point. to remind you that uh, the collection week, this is it. This is it. Eric's packing his boxes. So when these items, you're going to drop up to Eric. He's packing those Monday morning, so he will need them no later than Friday at closing, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then if you have packed boxes through your church or group, you need to get them to First Baptist no later than Monday night, the 22nd at 6 p.m. All right. Well, there you go. Now the challenge is up to you. If you're looking for something to do over the next few days, uh, to get your kids in the holiday spirit, the Thanksgiving spirit that's right here in front of us, Christmas spirit. Uh, this would be a great time to take 10, 12, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever you think that you need to spend and pack a shoebox and drop it off at uh, First Baptist or just grab some items and just put them in a bag and take them over to Volunteer Ritapest and they'll put it all together for you. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Eric, thank we you. appreciate you and everything that you do in the community. Well, thank you. We're going to take some music. Uh, what about some music right here? 11 minutes away from 4 o'clock on this Tuesday afternoon. This local time. Bro